Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're gonna to be talking about some new cherry switches. Now there is a new cherry switch on the block as if we didn't have enough already. They keep pushing things forward, trying to make things better and better for you gamers and also to last longer and longer really. But we've now been graced with the gray switch. Now, I could go into all the mumbo jumbo about it, but I can explain it to you the way I understand it, which is actually pretty simple. The gray switch is essentially a red, but it's a red that's a bit smaller. So essentially with the red, it's got a 45 gram actuation force and a two millimeter uh, stroke to get to the bottom for the key press. With the gray, it's exactly the same, apart from it's a 1.2 millimeter stroke to make that key press. So they've made the, the stroke the, you know, so much smaller. They call it an actuation distance. That's the word I've been looking for. So it's a 1.2 millimeter actuation distance rather than a one point, uh, rather than a two millimeter actuation distance. And you may think to yourself, why do we need a shorter stroke, Tom? Well, it's really for those very, very quick commands. Now, if you've ever played something like League of Legends, then you'll know when you're really smashing out like your spells and things like that. And uh, yes, okay, you can use macros for certain ones of those, but you obviously still do a lot of the normal key pressing yourself. And then that's really the time that the uh, very short and quick key presses makes things uh, much faster and much snappier. Now, I'm not a professional uh, FPS player, but I've spoken to some of, uh, some of my friends that literally work and then game, whereas mine's kind of just mainly kind of work. But they literally, when the time that they've got home and they fed themselves and they've let their wife know that they're actually alive, then they sit in front of their PC. Um, I've let a couple of my friends have a play around with this keyboard uh, with uh, frames, uh, frames per second. You can see what kind of mood I'm in, but in uh, first-person shooter games, and uh, one of them actually really liked this. The other one, I'll be totally honest with you, they preferred membrane keyboards, but the uh, one of them, uh, which uses a mechanical keyboard, actually did say that they noticed the difference with this, and they, they, they wanted to take it, but I haven't videoed yet. Uh, now, so uh, we have this new switch. And it's going to be coming uh, at first exclusively on Corsair keyboards, which some people are probably going to have a little flip about, but that's, uh, they've got a, uh, an exclusivity uh, thing for six months with Cherry, as they have done with the other ones. Now, with this new switch, it's still got the RGB enabled um, uh, ability in the background, which will please many people, because obviously you can then you can tailor your keyboard to your to your own needs. But what Corsair have done is we had the uh, Strafe Silent before. What we have now got with the Greys is an update to the K65 and the K70. I have the K70 in front of me here, and the K70 is basically the one with the number pad, and the K65 is the one without the number pad. The K70 that I've, I have, uh, it's been around for a little while, and it's always been a very bomb-proof and almost kind of a level that a lot of keyboard manufacturers try and get up to. You can disagree with me with that if you like, but the because of the solid aluminium frame on the uh, K70, and it has been around for quite a while, I can remember when the first K60 first came out, but because of the solid aluminium top on it, you could, it's got enough girth there that you would, you would probably kill someone before you actually uh, killed the keyboard if you were to use this as an offensive weapon. One thing that they have done with this one though is the keycaps are going to look very familiar if you've used a strafe because they're the same. You've got a much bolded uh, font on them now and I actually really like them. There's a bit of texture on the uh, space bar now but as far as the uh, technology in the K70 goes, we've got the lighting controller now from the strafe. And you've got per key lighting, it's RGB as well. Uh, something that will please many is the um, the USB pass through is back, and there is I need to get the word right, but the uh, the report rates can be uh, one, two, four, eight, or you have a BIOS. So if you've got a motherboard that gets funny with the keyboard, sometimes this can uh, fix that, especially if you've got ones that are not letting you get into the BIOS. It's very rare with the newer motherboards now, but this is just to help uh, it for those of you out there that are not running the latest board for argument's sake. But as I said, the USB pass-through is back. So uh, if you've got, for argument's sake, it could be somewhere that you put your USB stick. It could also be somewhere where you put your headset so that it saves with all of the cabling. Oh, K70 
cabling, yes, cabling. Has a 1.5 meter braided, soft braided cable as well. And uh, it may not please everyone, but I actually liked it. And it was the fact that the ends, rather than being uh, yellow, as they have been with some of the Corsair gaming stuff in the past, these have now got gray ends. And I personally prefer these, because they're slightly more understated. Um, when we talk about the keys, you do get some extra uh, with keys with uh, different uh, feeling. You can see I've not opened them yet. But we've got these uh, extra keys, and you've got the WASD ones for your FPS games, and then you've got the QWER and then FD for the MOBAs and stuff like that. So you can swap those in and out should you wish. Also, when we talk about keys, you've got um, some uh, media buttons on the top right hand corner. You've got the mute button, you've actually got a scroll wheel for your uh, volume, and then you've got stop, skip, play, and pause. Pretty simple. You've got a Windows lock button and you've also got a staged lighting button for the uh, up on the top so you can turn it down or, you know, or off if you would like to uh, with a simple switch and without even to have to touch the software. Now software, the Q software, I know a lot of people uh, kind of have, of course, let's face it, they have had um, uh, a bit of a reputation in the past for software, but I can promise you they are coming on in leaps and bounds with it now. And the software, the Q software that actually controls these, that you can play around with the lighting and stuff, is actually pretty damn good. And if you've played with the other keyboards, I would say it's on par. If not, they're getting to the point where they're having arguments with who's best. They are having arguments with who's best. But the Q software, you can, uh, like I said, you can actually set the lighting yourself if you want. Per key, you can uh, set little animations to it if you want. But there's also some options there so that you can uh, go through and you can actually, uh, you can have ones where it rains and you've, there's some now where it can, uh, it will be the equaliser to the music that you're listening with. But because Corsair have kind of got that whole um, kind of ecosystem of products now, what they've also got is the keyboard, your mouse and your headset can all work and uh, interact together. So if you've got them on red, your keyboard, your mouse and everything will show red. If you want to set it so that it's uh, doing colour waves, it will all do that. So it's all pretty, you know, it's pretty cool that you can link everything together now. Uh, the other thing that I do need to uh, talk about with the keyboard is you do have the wrist rest, which is uh, easier to get off, um, but it's also it's a lot sturdier as well. When it goes on, it's, it's really on there. But something else which I thought was kind of nice, now we're used to keyboards having um, little latches to lift them up at the back, but the Corsair actually has them at the front as well now so that you can lift the keyboard up entirely. Now that's obviously just gonna be, it's gonna be a very personal thing. It's not something that I personally like. I normally just have the back ones, but it's maybe because I've never had the opportunity of having the front ones before. But you've got all of those kind of options there for you to be able to make it as comfortable an environment. And let's face it, if we end up spending days on end playing our games, or at least very late nights, early mornings, you want it to be um, as, as comfortable for you as humanly possible. <clears throat> now, the, uh, they do call it the rapid fire, which is what those grey keys called, and you've got that real, uh, you know, you've got that real short actuation. Now, it's gonna be totally down to your personal preference whether this is going to be something for you. They do say with the people that kind of play League and the MOBAs and stuff, you're gonna notice that uh, the most. But as I've said, with some personal testing with friends that are absolutely obsessed with the FPS games, one of them said that he did notice that uh, movements and stuff were definitely slightly sped up. Could have been psychosomatic, that's going to be completely down to you, but when you watch a review like this and you're talking about a keyboard with those kind of mo emotions and stuff, it's very difficult for us to be able to put that into a, uh, in a thing that you can actually watch. <clears throat> So the long and short of it is, as you would expect, with all these new things that they've brought to the K70, you'd expect the price to go up. And I was expecting the price to be the same or go up, but somehow they've managed to drop the price. And it's gonna come down from 165, which is how with the RGB has been for a little while, and they've brought the price down now to 150 pounds. So you get a uh, shorter stroke key, which you may say that's the only real kind of change, but you've got the, uh, the key cap change, which I personally thoroughly prefer to the old K70. 
but you've also got the lighting hardware change inside now. So it's a much ramped up um, uh, uh, the, the hardware inside. So you've got the, the full RGB 16.3 million colors. You've got all the control. You've got the, uh, like I said, the, uh, like the rain and the uh, equalizer and stuff that you can actually do on this now. And with the old uh, K70, I don't believe it was uh, something that you could do with the Corsair software itself. So they've done a lot of the under the, the skin kind of changes as well. But essentially, without the font change, they've kept the general aesthetics of the keyboard itself the same. And to be honest with you, when you get something like this, I think it would have been a, a mistake to have changed it too much. Uh, so that's where it comes. The fact that it's uh, the, the K70, you are, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And there are many more people out there that love it than they hate it. The fact that they've brought this, the new keycaps in, the new technology in, and we've got these new super fast keys, which obviously if you are in the professional gaming or really trying to get that edge against your friends, then that could be brilliant. But I think that this deserves the OC3D Enthusiast Grade Award because let's face it, it's Enthusiast Grade because you are going to need to be an enthusiast to spend £150 on a keyboard. But these uh, top flight keyboards are getting more and more sought after. Um, so there we go. And in case you're wondering about the awards, we will be doing a little, vi little video in the not too distant future to explain to you our new award structure because it has all changed. So, OC3D Enthusiast Grade Award for the new K70 with the grey switches. But this is Tiny Tom Logan in his new set with another video for you. Out.